Hey, what's up, Cody? I just noticed uh, your comment there. You just picked up some of the new pigment, which is great because we're going to be talking all about um, what this pigment can do. Uh, but uh, we'll just wait. I know that this is just uh, one of my other videos are just ending and we're just getting right into this live. Um, so we're just going to wait for just a second. Let's get a few more people, but I'll explain a little bit about the pigment. This is a um, like a 90 style. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it neon, but it's the brightest the pigment that uh, that I definitely could find. Um, this stuff mixes in, and I said this a little bit last week, this stuff mixes in straight with the uh, inner coat clear. Your base coat right here. And we're able to make some colors. So as you can see right here as the base color, I have uh, the yellow down right here over a white. So I laid down a white base coat, mix this pigment up, which is right here. Uh, taped out. The panel right here because i knew i wanted to do frankenstein down up in here and uh just filled that all in with that that yellow uh, after i did that i clear coated it and that's where we're at right here so but we'll get into the pigments in a little bit i need to sand this panel to get it scuffed and get it ready for um what we're going to be doing here with the frankenstein What's up, Killer Capricorn from Texas? That's a nice Frankenstein, hey, buddy. Oh, Frankenstein Fabrications. It's right up your alley, man. Like I said, this is just a yellow base coat that I laid down. And I did lay some clear coat over that because the reason for that is I wanted a really smooth surface to start with. And if I want to do some erasing later to where I can er erase it back to this color, um, it's going to look really cool, and I'll, I'll probably end up showing you that for sure. But for now, I'm just getting this scuffed down. This is the same panel that I used last week. We did the... You can see we did the freak... Uh, what's that called again? Crystal. Mutant crystals. Mutant crystals. Or whatever they call it. It's called a bunch of different stuff, but... We're going to get it all scuffed down. Somebody asked where you got that stencil for the Frankenstein. I just pulled it off of Google. Google search. I think I Google search uh, Frankenstein uh, portrait or something like that. And I just picked one that's easy to do. That's uh, not going to be too hard. That way uh, anybody can do this. Like what, what I'm about to do, like even if you're a beginner you're gonna get something close to what I'm doing. So I got some glass cleaner down. I'm just gonna wipe that sanding residue off. India, I'd say your first name if I could say it. Dinesh Babu from India, welcome. Okay, we got that cleaned up. This is what we're gonna be doing. Um, this is what I printed off of Google. I just kind of searched up images. I like this one because uh, it's all hard lines. And I feel like this is going to be really easy for you guys to follow along to be able to do this. But uh, basically, I was just I just got it scaled to this right here. And I've already pre-cut this, so you don't have to watch all this happen. Um, let me show you what I used real quick. So you can use any X-Acto blade or you can use a razor blade. Uh, but what I did is basically I just cut out all the dark areas you can see right here. So I cut out around the brows, down up underneath there. I followed the form all the way around and cut this stencil out with this. So just take your time, cut out all the dark areas. There was one thing with this image that I did have to address is, is that... If you look real close right here, the eyes, they don't connect. That's supposed to be printed right there. They don't connect anywhere. So those would just be like free floating because we're cutting out all the darks. What I did was I just left the little, little hangers right there. You can see it right there. 
just to hold that eye together. And then on this nose, it's also free floating. Uh, there's a piece of tape right here on this back side. You can see that is holding that on for right now. But yeah, we flip it over and you can you can see about what's what's gonna happen is we have a template that we cut out of just a regular sheet of paper that's printed on a inkjet or whatever you got, doesn't matter. And just cutting out the dark areas. Lay that out. Yeah, that looks great. I kind of I like how this image also hourglasses and kind of follows along with the shape that we have going on there. So this is gonna be perfect. So now that I have this scuffed down, we'll get rid of this. I uh, don't really need it. And move this aside and I'm going to go ahead and tape this up and then mask out this both sides because all we're going to be doing is working down the center. And like, like I said before, if you guys are just barely joining in, this is painted with a, a yellow base coat. Right here. It's a yellow base coat right here. Pigment base coat. Mix that in a clear, clear base coat, make any color you want, basically. So we have a yellow here and that's what I laid down here. I taped this off, laid down the yellow over top of white and cleared it, sanded it. And now I have a sanded layer of clear coat that I'm working on top of that's really smooth. That way, once we build these base colors up, it's not going to get too rough too fast because once you start getting so much paint build up, it's like uh, it just becomes too much and it'll start to it'll start to affect the way your next layers spray on top of those because they starting to ball up and stuff. Um, at that point, what I do is usually clear it and then you can move on with a little more detail if you wanted to after that, but not to get into too deep here. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and tape this off and then we'll kind of move on from there. You guys have any questions? Feel free. Uh, just chime in and, and we'll get them answered. Someone has a question. They said, <clears throat> goofy question. If you wanted to change a design that you teach all the time, can you go backwards taking off layers, then add design, or do you have to take off everything, start from scratch? Uh, no, you don't have to, you don't have to start from scratch. Um, you, you don't have to, you can, uh, you can just black it out or white it out or whatever, and then, uh, maybe clear it and start over. You can do that but uh, as far as sanding it off i don't know it's a good way to do it too if you want to start over but usually if you just clear it like if you're just practicing on something like this clear coat it and then if you're not happy with it scuff that clear coat down and then start something new or try it again if you were trying to, to, to learn something Someone asked, would the same concept work on making a skull template? Yes. Yeah, you can use, you can do skulls, you can do, you can pretty much make that anything, whatever you can print out. Um, even if it's a, a realistic looking image, you can cut out the, the, the dark areas and use that as a template. It's gonna be a little more difficult because it's harder to find the, the sharp edges and the dark areas on a, on a real photo. Unlike this is just a drawing, but uh, it's definitely the way I do it for sure. Even if I was to draw something up, I would draw it up on paper and still cut a stencil. I wouldn't really draw it out on the with an airbrush, although that is also a possibility too. Just it all depends on you know. There's a lot of different ways to do it. They're all going to look a little different. Uh, it's all good. So I'm just going to kind of mock this up to see where I want to put it. I think I'll just do it right there, right there in the center.
I'll go ahead and lay down a piece of tape right here. And that's going to work out nice. It has like his little ear will work as a tab. There we go. The bolt. No, we're okay. Okay, I'll move it over a little bit. That's pretty good. All right, so uh, what I have here is once again, I have the yellow. And I have some green base coat mixed up. And what these are, once again, is uh, base coat pigment. So this is just the pigment that, that makes the base coat. This is, and it's ground down fine enough that we're able to do detailed airbrush work with it uh, because it is ground down so fine. Um, there's really no metallics or anything on this. This is just a straight, uh, kind of a bright pigment. And what I'll do is I'll, in my airbrush, I'll probably just mix these two together. So now that I have these pre-mixed out of powder and put them into clear base coat, I'm gonna go ahead and mix them into Mix them into the one of these mixing cups right here. So as you can see, I have the yellow there. And then take a little bit of the green. Because I don't want to go all the way to green right now with the first color. I want to have it kind of the two colors mixed to make a really bright green. Oh, I probably shouldn't do that right on top. No, we're all right. So I got a little bit of green in there. We'll see what that does. Now it's really bright green. I'm going to put a little bit Make it more yellow. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I want it, you know, greener than that. This is a little, probably a little greener, but it'll be fine. That'll work out good. So this is already reduced with urethane reducer. As you can see, it's pretty thin. Okay, uh, a little bit about the airbrush. I have a Iwata Neo El Cheapo. This thing's only like 65 bucks. Um, and it works really good. And we're gonna do, you know, some pretty good detail here just with this this cheap brush. Now, like what I say about um, to a lot of people and they ask about me about airbrushes, it's better to buy an Iwata and buy their lowest end airbrush than it would be to buy anything else. And it's still like just barely over 50 bucks. So it's a good deal. Okay, we're gonna take the green mixture. We're gonna load some up, maybe a little, little bit more. We're gonna see how this stuff sprays. Somebody asked, what paint would you recommend for somebody starting out? They've been painting lacquer and 2K poly for cabinets. Where would be a good paint to start with? Or what would be a good paint to start with? Um, I, I just like regular solvent-based automotive paint, like what I'm using here. Um, you can, if you're wanting to go waterborne, then I would definitely go with Pretex. But um, I stick with this. This just mixes with uh, automotive base coat, and it's just the dry pigment for it. So we're able to tint it, We and we uh, reduce it down with urethane reducer. Somebody wants to know if you have airbrush with the water based materials. Do I? Have I? Have you? Yes, I have. It works good. It just takes longer to dry. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I have 
like I said, I have the green loaded up here and I'm just going to follow this stencil around all the cutout areas. Not going all crazy, just lightly misting, misting it down because we're going to definitely go darker. That way we can kind of map, have a road map to, to our airbrushing here. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let's see. Hopefully y'all can see it. All right. Yeah. Not too bad. I can see it. I can see it pretty good, but let me uh, let me see if I can get this a little closer so I can see what I'm talking about. You can see I just barely kind of sprayed that in so I can see where all my dark areas are going to be. So you can see the the lip there, the chin, where the eyes are, the hairline, and then obviously around. So the reason why it's so, it's you know, there's not very, a very big color difference because we just put a few drops of the green um, into the same yellow color just offsetting it a little bit and that's what we want we, we want it to, to not be too far off and too dark too fast um we probably could have went a little bit darker on this but this is going to be fine so i'm going to go in there and we're going to make just some details just some textures somebody wants to know what filter type do you use to keep moisture out of the line um i just have a well, right now in my eye water right here, I just have that studio compressor and it has a little water filter built in. But not usually a problem here. Maybe in some other states, you might have a little more of a, an issue. You might have to do something else. So what I'm doing, I'm just kind of just building up the green, just up and around. Kind of here and there, nothing too like I'm not really doing anything too crazy. Just kind of just going back and forth, mixing those two colors together a little bit. Now we can build up the paint and start building up these pigments colors. And then once we get going darker, we'll have enough contrast where you'll be able to see a little bit better. Okay, I know that doesn't look like much, but we're gonna go ahead and mix up a little bit darker of a color here. We got the green here. And I think, you know what, we're just going to go straight, straight to the green. So let me clean out the airbrush. Somebody asks, how many clear coats is too much? Um, All right, sorry. Let me get closer to the phone here. So you have a microphone. Um, it, it all depends on what you're painting. Um, I uh, it's it's not abnormal for me to put on 14 coats of clear coat or even more, um, especially if you're doing image transfers and stuff like that. If you're painting your car, you're gonna you're not gonna want to put 14 coats on it. If you're painting your bike and you're doing a bunch of graphics, you're gonna want to do probably that much or who who knows if. I don't, I don't have a problem with it. You know, once it's sanded down, 
you don't you can't put that many on like straight at once like you're not gonna put down 14 coats all at once you're gonna put down three to four and then you're gonna sand it down you know let it air out do some more graphics on it clear it again three to four more coats let it dry sand it down do some more graphics fix some stuff three to four more coats and then maybe that you're all done at that point and you just got to fix a couple little things maybe a little bit over spray here and there um but other than that then sand it down three to four more coats and that's pretty much like the flow coats that would that make it you know you, you do some flow coats at the end and make it really easy on yourself when you go to cut and polish because it's already so smooth all right Let's see how dark this is on here Someone asked, when you're spraying graphs, graphics, is it better to spray it lighter or heavier? No, uh, definitely lighter in all cases. You can always do more coats, you know. You see, I'm just kind of following the edges here. This is definitely going to be dark enough so you'd be able to see it now when I pull this off. Like this is, like I said, this is just kind of like a generic stencil. We're not really, we're just trying to make something cool here. We're not really make, trying to make it look too realistic, even though we'll put some textures in towards the end that'll kind of make it look like that. But really it's not, this design's not really made for that. It's just, it'll be fun. Hopefully it turns out good. Somebody just asked, um, do you prefer Limeline black base coat or the Speedo coat? Uh, I like the Limeline better. But I'm biased on that question. <laughs> it's actually, the Limeline's my brand, so uh, I like it both the same. I like the fact that mine comes in a quart rather than buying a gallon of it. Because really, a quart will last you a long time when it comes to base coat. And then John Hayes is asking. I know he's from Canada because he's on here several times. So he just says, "If you live in in snowy and sunny climate, how do you protect the paint, graphics, wax, polish, etc.?" After, or. After it's clear coated, yeah, you would just use. Yeah, we definitely use a wax. I don't really know much about that. Um, kind of know everything up to clear coat and polishing, and that's about it. But I do wax all my personal stuff, definitely like three times a year minimum. I like to pile that on. But hopefully that answered your question. Definitely use wax. Wait a little bit though, wait a couple months after your new paint, but. Then someone just said, if you spray graphics thick, will it bleed under the tape? It's better spraying light coat? Yes, absolutely. Always light coats. Cause you can always add more. Okay, there we go. Now you can see it. But you can see it's kind of a nice tone now because I did use that green yellow mixture there. And it kind of like, Instead of it being just so hard lined, uh, which it still is pretty hard lined, we're going to go in here with the same color, the same green, and we're going to go create, you know, some textures and some detail to give us, you know, a little bit of a realistic look. Uh, one thing that I can say that's probably, if, if you take anything from this, you, you might learn something just right here. When you're spraying this same green color, what I'm trying to do is is make texture and 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 make a you know kind of a, a wavy kind of line look to where whichever way I feel like you know the face kind of goes. But you want to keep your edges clean, and what I mean by that is when I get up in here and you'll you'll watch this when I do this, I don't want to blow this 
all the way up in this and then lose an edge right here. I want this, I want all of my edges to stay bright. So that means in order to keep them bright, you don't want to spray too much dark paint on them. Yeah, you could say, okay, yeah, maybe I can just go back after that and use the same yellow and brighten them back up, which we will do that. But it's not going to be the same look. It's it, by by no indirection, and um, you know the way you're pointing your airbrush. You're going to want like the bottom of this chin. When I go in here, and we go in to do some detail here, I'm going to kind of keep this edge clean. Don't spray right here, covering up this whole area. You know that would be like the worst thing that could happen right now. Is just you know filling that in, losing that little edge. If you're going to shadow, shadow off a little bit into that direction and hopefully that makes sense i want to explain that now before i get into airbrushing this thing but that's probably the most important thing that i've ever learned was that one thing i can't remember who told me but uh keep your edges clean which means keep them bright and uh you know stay off of them that way we're going to have this nice uh secondary highlight that kind of bounces off his chin which will make all the difference so Let's get into it and I'll uh, start airbrushing a little bit of detail in this. Somebody says, uh, is there a good place to get replacement parts, airbrushes? I hurt my Iwata Eclipse Micron. Micron Iwata Eclipse? Yeah, yeah. You'd, uh, you'd probably go to Coast Airbrush. And somebody says, have you ever used Harley Davidson stencil brand stencils before? And if yes, what's the review? Uh, I haven't. I didn't even know those were available. Yeah. I didn't even know they had their own stencils. So I'm just kind of creating a texture here. Once again, staying away from my edges. Little cracks there, little, you know how his face is all jacked up, you know it. I'm gonna thin this paint out just a little bit more. You can see your hair was hissing a little bit at me. A little more urethane reducer in there. So someone says, have you ever used House of Color Trans Nubuli instead of mixing a small amount of black into clear? I haven't. I've heard of that stuff. I think it's just like a, a fancy clear base coat. Trans Nebula Eli. I can't say it right. <laughs> okay, this is better. I thinned that out a little bit more. Somebody wants to know if you're going to be at SEMA. Yeah, we're going to be there. Me too this time. And she's going to be there. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, next week we'll do the live on Wednesday because we are leaving Thursday. And we're not too far. Only six hours away. What up, dude? Somebody just asked, what's the best way to avoid orange peel on clear coat? Turn up the pressure dial in the fluid knob? Um, yeah, you would turn up your pressure and then probably thin out your clear coat like 10% or so with with your urethane reducer you can always send it out but yeah allow really if you want it to you know if you're trying to get it completely smooth like your first or second coat of clear coat and you have orange peel you're not to the point to having enough material on there to get the clear to get the clear coat to lay out to not have orange peel so that's one mistake I see a lot of people make is they expect to put two coats on something and they have no clear coat or no 
orange peel, but they really don't have enough material down. So that really won't start laying out until like the third coat minimum. That's why I usually put four coats on myself. But um, you can, like I said, you can reduce it out a little bit with the urethane reducer, turn up your pressure, and you're gonna take care of a lot of that. And you're gonna have a, no matter what, you're gonna have orange peel. You just gotta, you, you know, it's gonna have a little bit here and there. I mean, nobody's perfect. And that's why really, if you're doing custom paint, you have to learn how to cut and buff. You have to learn how to sand out your orange peel and, uh, and polish it back out because ain't nothing going to replicate that really, you know, unless, you know, some of these guys may be on cars, but on, on bikes with these multiple coats, the customers are expecting you to, to cut that, that paint to be cut and polished and, uh, you know, free of debris and all that stuff. You're trying to cut corners. You know, you can do it the way you want to, but I feel like all custom paint should be cut and polished. Let me know if you disagree. <laughs> and somebody said, do I have to buy a marbleizer to do marbling in my paint job or what? I'm not a painter, but want to do it myself. No, 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 no. You don't have to buy all that. You just, I don't know what marbleizer was. I think it was just a somebody anthony martinez replied and said you can use saran wrap yeah yeah you just use saran wrap but i think even with marbleizer you still use saran wrap they just uh, the paint stayed open longer like it stayed wet longer but yeah there's a lot of different ways to do that um we just did marbleize on the live a couple days ago right or a couple weeks ago yeah, yeah two weeks ago Okay, so like I said, can you see right here, for example, I kept the edges of the nose really clean. You know, I'm still coming in here and getting some of the chin, but I'm not, I'm leaving like a strip around the edges to where this day is really bright. And that's, you know, once we were, if I was to hit that like right there and start to lose that, it's going to be hard to get that back. I mean, the only way to re really do it to make it look the same is to erase it a little bit right there. If you're going to try to put the yellow back on it's going to be a different look not the same look which is okay it's still a good look but it's not as good of a look and it's not as clean of a look And you see right here how, you know, here I'm kind of rounding, rounding the edges with his chin, kind of coming around, following that shadow right there. See right here where like his um, top, uh, below his nose, his upper lip, it's going to be, you know, you can just imagine there's lines going down. Just, uh, I mean, you can take photo reference off of a real Frankenstein and see what his facial features kind of look like. But I mean, after you really... Like every face kind of has the same direction of skin, I guess. I don't know. Whatever it is on their top layer. So, I mean, this, you really wouldn't go that way too much, you know. Kind of keep it vertical. Right now, I'm not really focusing. I'm not trying to do too much detail. I'm just trying to get texture in there and trying to get the direction right. Somebody asked if you're ever going to try engrave, engraving metal, like on rims. Yeah, that looks like fun. Um, I unfortunately don't have enough time to do something like that. But somebody should. <laughs> you're going to want to pick up a different hobby rather than painting. Go do that. It's awesome. Somebody asked, what's your cut and buff process? Like what sandpapers do you use? I use 2000, 2000 grit, 3000 grit. And then uh, my Limeline brand does have the hand polisher and then the two pads that go along. And I use personally use CSI for my compound because it's just one compound, those two pads. It works great. In fact, I'm, I have a video coming out uh tomorrow i'm just finishing up the cut and polish on that that uh image transfer tank 
and I gotta get final shots of that and then the uh, the video will come out of that whole process so probably tomorrow or was tomorrow Friday yeah so probably tomorrow or Saturday one of those days watch for that okay looking pretty good there kind of just blend it in all right, that's looking good. We're gonna go ahead and go. We're gonna go back to the yellow, just for a minute. And we're not gonna hit our edges, but we're gonna come back and hit some of these other areas to to give it a little bit different look. You'll see, you'll see how different this looks compared to like what this looks right here um, on the edging and stuff like that. It's a, it's not really a blue shift because there's no really, it's not going to go blue when it's green, but it's just a different look. Yellow. Then I'm just gonna come back. Got a gnarly shadow right there. Let's see here. I might have this reduced a little bit too much. Let's see. Oh now we're okay. So I'm just gonna go back and hit there you see how much greener it looks like you can see i hit it right there maybe maybe not like i said it's not the same look because we're we're using yellow on top of green rather than the yellow on top of white i'm just going to come in here and then these bright areas just here and there i'm going to hit up some of this This yellow because what this is doing is adding just like a little bit of body to everything like it's going to add it's going to push things forward wait a minute it's going to pull things forward <laughs> i'm pushing things back we'll push things back later with a darker color somebody asked if you have a video on chrome effect blue on top brown on bottom um i don't and i've never really been that good at that either uh i've done it in some classes before but we probably should that's the way to get better at it i am doing some real uh chrome like a chrome paint on this next job we'll see if it turns out if it does you'll see some content on it but it's going to be a chrome paint with some candies over the top. Something way different than what you're used to seeing. Somebody asked if you can use Cretex products on top of Limeline brand base coats. Yeah, you can. You just want to make sure it's dry. Yeah, what I'm doing right here can be done also in Cretex. It's going to take longer to dry. And it don't flow quite as good. In my opinion, it's still good. Especially how light we're spraying. It's not really not that big of a deal. A little bit more down here by the chin i'm just kind of guessing going around just adding you know because like i said this is just adding some body to it uh making it look more round once we hit it with a you know if you really wanted to go crazy you could go back and forth with these two colors like uh you know two or three times and get them to kind of mix in together you know just 
you know, was really what I'm doing is I'm just kind of wisping around, you know, creating all these little lines everywhere. Like in the chin is going to go around like this. The, you know, his cheeks are going to go like that. His lips going to go like that. His nose is going to go like that. His, his uh, forehead is going to go like that. And then come, we'll come back and do a little bit, you know, up and down. But really what we're trying to do is trying to get that look of uh, 3D, you know. So we're kind of coming up like this. So same thing with a skull. If you're doing top of a skull head, you're going to really bring that arch, you know, a lot. So you're just building it up, going that direction. You know, if you're a pencil drawer, same, this is going to make a lot of sense. You know, you're just going to keep doing the pencil drawings and, you know, go back and forth to however you, however you would want to do it. I mean, there's really no rules. We're just really trying to keep these edges clean and not go too, I mean, really, we're not going too dark right now where it's going to cause a problem. Once we get into the darker colors, you, you're, you have to be more careful because right now it's kind of a free for all. We're just building paint right here this is all just all good and fun uh but once we get down to the darker colors that's like when we need to be a little more serious about where we're putting paint i mean if you're not that good with air, an airbrush you could come back here you know like i said try to keep those edges clean you know that that that's why i'm so close you know kind of building it up slowly and you're moving around from one area to the other All right, that's looking really good. I think we're ready. Like I said, if you if you guys wanted to go with more detail in this, um, go back with the yellow and then hit it with this green again. Or no, hit it with the green and then go back with this yellow because I'm on yellow right now. Uh, but we're just gonna go ahead and go with a darker color because we're not, we don't wanna be here all day. And, and really, it's not gonna be that big of a difference. It's, uh, you're not gonna be able to see the difference on camera. Um, by, by doing that much detail and really we got some darker colors to go this thing's gonna turn out great you'll see somebody said what is your favorite paint brand for high quality colors paint brand uh i like house of color for candies Right now, I'm all I'm going to use really is the lime line stuff. Uh, you're pretty much going to see me build a lot of my content off of the colors that we're using right here. So we're going to use a lot of pearls. We're going to use a lot of metallics. We're going to use some bright colors, um, all kinds of different stuff. Okay, I got some blue here. Premix. Once again, I just took the little scooper, scooped it in there. Mix it up with clear base coat. And now I got some blue. But before I go spraying blue on this thing, I do want to mix it a little bit with the green so I can make it blue green and not so blue. So we have the a new cup here. Take some of the blue. That'll be enough. And take the green. Maybe some more blue. Make it a little darker. Yeah, it's definitely darker in person than it is on the camera. I can tell you that right now. It looks almost the same, but that's pretty dark. A 
load up our airbrush. That looks pretty thick. I have this cool ketchup bottle. If you don't have one, you should get one. Somebody said, what grit do you sand with after spraying Intercoat Clear? You know what? I have a lot of people ask me uh, what to sand Intercoat Clear with. And, <laughs> and really, I've never sanded Intercoat Clear in my life. Like, I don't see the reasoning behind sanding Intercoat Clear. You don't need to sand it. It's not really meant to be sanded. In fact, if you've ever sanded it, it kind of just balls up. Um, the only thing you really need to sand is clear coat once it's been hardened. If you have waited too long on your inner coat clear, like say you've waited like a couple weeks or something, maybe it'd be a good idea to kind of sand it, but I don't, you're going to ruin it really. I mean, if your inner coat clear has anything in it, like a candy or a pearl, you're going to end up disturbing whatever that is. You're going to smudge the candy. You're going to move the pearls. Uh, inner coat clear is not meant to be sanded and it doesn't act anything like clear coat. It doesn't harden like that. It actually stays in uh in a it's like it acts like a base coat really so yeah hopefully that helps don't sand don't sand your inner coat clear and if i'm wrong let me know why i'm wrong because i'm pretty sure i'm not i don't know i get that question a lot though a ton it's like what what about sanding inner coat clear inner coat clear is just a base coat you can you can paint directly on top of of that inner coat clear it's gonna more more base coat or more or, or clear coat itself is gonna buy into that unless you have some kind of a a catalyze a catalyzed base coat inner coat then then it's probably different and maybe it's it's hardening different that you're able to do that okay so i have a blue green mixture in here we'll see if it's dark enough yeah, it looks pretty good. Somebody asked, do you use fast reducer on all graphics? And in what situations do you need to slow it down? The reducer? Um, you know what? I usually just use medium all the time. And reducer has never really affected the airbrushing paint that I know of. So I would just stick with medium or fast. Um, I think reducer matters more when it comes to reducing clear coat or reducing primer and stuff like that that's put on heavier because then it takes longer for it to evaporate. Airbrush paint's put on so thin that really it's dry um, almost by the time it hits. But I usually stick with medium because that's just what I always use. Then somebody asked you, would you consider doing lightning with silver leaf or is it better to airbrush it? Lightning with, with silver leaf? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I would probably, it depends on what you want the lightning to look like. If you want it to look real, then that's interesting actually. Uh, yeah, you could try it. I, I would like to see it. <laughs> Go ahead and try it with leafing. I, first, I would say no. I would just airbrush it in uh, with some light blues, some dark blues, and some whites. Use those as a as the colors to start with. It depends on what you want it to look like. If you want to look realistic, airbrush it. If you want maybe something cool, maybe try leafing it. Okay, I'm just kind of going around everything, hitting the stencil, kind of just putting everything back in its place. Someone said, what's the name or brand of that dry pigment so they can search for them? Of what? The, the pigments? Uh, the lime line is the pigments. So these bright pigments right here are the ones I'm airbrushing with. But lime line base coat pigments. The, oh, the link would have been down in the description. I didn't put it in there. But after this video is over, I'll go ahead and update that. So you'll find the Amazon link on the stuff out. I'm, I'm not, not sure, sure if the blue's on there yet. It will be, but the green and the yellow's on there right now.
Someone wants to know if you own that brand. Could you use it a lot? Which brand? I'm sorry. Limeline. Oh, he uses the Limeline? They said, <laughs> do you own that brand because you use a lot of their products? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know the guy. And then someone just said, is Clearbase the same? Oh, it moved on me. Is Clearbase the same as Clear Coat? No. No, clear base coat is the same as what like an inner coat clearer would be. Uh, clear base is like regular colored base coat, but just clear. It's not catalyzed. It's not shiny when it dries. Um, it, and it needs to be coated with some kind of a clear coat, which is a 2K clear coat, which means there's a part A and part B that mix together to chemically harden the clear coat. So once it's sprayed on, there's a chemical reaction with those two parts that um, harden that clear coat hard enough that once it dries, we're able to sand it with 2000, usually 2000 grit, that's what I do, and then polish it back out to make the clear coat perfect. Um, if you try to do that with like a spray can clear coat or anything like that, it's not gonna work for you. Uh, maybe if it's the 2K in the can, it, would, it might work, but who knows? Uh, the two parts is what works the best. Part A, part B, anything that has part A, part B means it's chemically hardened and um, it's going to protect it. Okay, so I have the same green here. I'm gonna come in here and then just add some more shadows, some softer ones. And I'm just trying to be a little bit more careful with this now, because now I'm in a darker color. Once you go too dark, you really can't go hard to go back unless we're erasing and we can because like I said when we started this thing we started it uh, over a yellow base coat that's been clear coated so if we want to scratch the surface or erase the surface we can erase it back to this color um, and we'll and we'll do that at the very end we'll kind of just like put a little texture here maybe bring uh, maybe bring um, some of the highlights back by uh, by pulling some of those back, which it, make, it makes all the difference. Brian Lindley said, what up brother, looking good. And is that a mini hood? Yeah, yeah. it is a mini hood. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks man. man. And someone says, have you ever used Cretex candy base then use House of Color? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, no, I haven't, but, um, it would, I think it would be okay. I don't know if that's all you got. I'd probably try to stay using the same stuff, but just let it dry in between. Oh yeah. Right on super chat. I appreciate that. Yeah, those help out. I appreciate that for sure. All right, I'm gonna kind of bring this green underneath that eye, creating a little bit of detail there. Same thing here. I'm gonna connect that back together to where that that eye should be look right again because like I said we did have that little connection right there that held the eye together I'm just gonna kind of come in there and take care of that it's creating the texture Somebody asked, just curious if your brand is in the future will have its own airbrush paints. Yes, it will. Yeah, they'll be in pigment form still. Like really, this is an airbrush paint. Um, it's ground down fine enough that you're able to airbrush some detail with it. The That's the thing with airbrush paint when it comes through such a uh, small little orifice like that. Um, if you have big pigments, they get caught up. 
and they don't they don't flow very smooth so the key is to really get those pigments ground down really fine uh, that way they don't get caught up on the needle so i'm working on that and that is that is going to happen somebody asked if the stencil packs are available yep they are you can you can basically just search up limeline and you can buy them on Amazon. You can buy them on Big Cartel. Um, you'll find them in a couple different places. Amazon, you'll get them quicker. And free shipping. And somebody said that his daughter wants has a Range Rover and wants to do crushed glass on it. Ooh. And then he said, should I get two clear kits and eight packs of the Limeline crushed glass packs? Um, uh, uh, you know, that sounds about right. I think the eight packs, the two clear coat. Now, remember the, the glass, you're going to have to end up, um, spraying the glass down, uh, hitting it with a couple coats of clear coat after the glass is down and then sanding that down and then hitting it with clear again. Um, so it is going to be a little bit of a process there because you do need to to sand down that texture. Uh, but that sounds amazing. And I think you're about right with the eight packs. Uh, what color, uh, I guess I'll have to ask you, what color do you plan on You going over the existing color of the car? Do you plan on spraying it black first? What's your, what's, what color is the car right now? I guess that's the best question. Primer, but yeah. Julio just gave you $20. Yeah, right on, Julio. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hopefully I can add value to you, what you guys are learning here. And, you know, what I'm doing here is not like, a, I'm just doing the same thing over again. I'm just adding detail, trying to keep my edges clean. So like right here, I'm not wanting to hit it like all up, right on his bottom of his lip. You know, I'm kind of just coming, see that? Kind of off of it a little bit. And then that's how you're gonna to make everything look round and you're not gonna lose any of your details. There's a couple of questions on the paint. They're saying, are you gonna try um, chameleon paint also called flip-flop paint? Uh, yes, I do. We have uh, the chameleons actually on the website already. Take a break away for a second. Um, but here you can see this one right here. We've got a green, red, into a purple. I mean, you can see that. There's a big difference. There you can see. Those are on there. Also available just like this they're a little more expensive because to be honest they cost a fortune to manufacture the process to get these to, to shift colors but they work and they're they're cool and i think they're only i think i have them on there for 40 bucks and they will literally go for a long ass time like you you'll have them for a minute or longer if unless you plan on doing a range rover then you need two <laughs> But so, yeah, we have those two others too. Color changing. I'll, I'll show, show you one other right here. Purple to blue. Yeah. Cool stuff. And someone else asked, um, is the pigment mica pearl? Because they said they're looking for non-pearlized pigments. Yes, and that's really what you want when you're airbrushing is a non-pearl pigment. And these, what I'm using right here, is a non-pearl pigment. Um, the other stuff is not. I mean, all of the uh, the bright colors I have here are pearl. Are, are, I'm sorry, are not a pearl. They are just a pigment. Uh, the other airbrush paints that are coming out, they're getting ground down finer. Uh, once again, are a, uh, a pigment. Yeah, let's hear them. Someone said, how about you doing Limeline 12 ounce candy products, like a set of 10 or 12? Yeah, that sounds good. 
point me in the right direction where I can get that at. And then someone said, is there anything that helps sand down runs? Uh, yeah, a hard block. You, the, you can use any hard block when some 2000 grit. But definitely use a hard block because if not, if you use a soft block or a DA sander that's not like has it's not really hard then um you're going to end up just burning right through your paint you need to wherever the run is you need to sand it down and on the way the run's going so the run's going this way you're going to want to sand it that way keep sanding it in one direction it sucks but everybody gets run especially this time of year starting to cool off everybody's getting it like uh i had some runs the other day Usually when I get runs, I'll block them down and I'll just re-clear it because I don't want to mess with it. And then Julio that gave you this super chat just said, thanks for showing us. And he wants to know if you draw as well as airbrush. Yeah, I draw. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't draw enough. But I, for a while there, I think for six months straight, I was drawing with an airbrush every morning for an hour. And I was freehanding. So basically I would take like an image like this and I would take an hour every morning and I wish I had time to still do it and then I would just airbrush freehand um, you know the lines and try to get the proportions right and I started to get pretty good to where I can pretty much draw anything as long as I had a picture of it to go off of um, but I love to draw with an airbrush rather than with a pencil and I draw the same way you know just with lines same way I'm doing here except for it would be no stencil and i didn't ever care when i it was all just practice i never cared if it looked good after the hour was over i would stop usually they were all half finished and that's all i did just an hour out of every day it was great cody daniel gave you another 20 bucks he said on super chat he said i've learned so much from you buddy and it's been getting me a lot of business yeah right on dude yeah, I know there's a few people. There's a lot of work out there, a ton of work. And especially with social media, people are starting to see what's possible. And um, like if you can do something like this just to add a little bit to your your skill set, like it doesn't even need to be this detailed. And I actually should stop right now. But you can see that I'm just kind of going through, you know, keeping my edges clean, um, adding some darks here and there wherever I feel like it's going to look good. But yeah, definitely appreciate that super chat. That's, that's great, guys. And somebody said, um, what's a good air compressor for airbrush? Uh, I like Awada. They have the, I'm using the studio. The Iwata Studio, studio jet. jet. Works, Works good. good. And the guy that talked about painting their uh, crushed glass on the rover said, the the base coat is already black. Oh, nice. Yeah, so scuff that down. Spray that glass over the top. Just remember, that's gonna you're gonna leave some texture there, and you're gonna want to, um, you know, once you get the glass down, mixed in with your clear coat, you get that sprayed down, even, you know, to how you, how you want it to look and uh then to hit it with like two two to three more coats of clear coat pretty thick to get that um to kind of level out a little bit more let that dry and then you could cut it down with say 600 grit just try not to burn through anywhere um and then hit it with clear coat again two two to three coats three to four coats maybe and that thing's gonna look uh phenomenal in fact i did my daughter's mini cooper I didn't do it in the glass. I did it in metal flake. And she gets compliments all the time. Usually by Mexican folks. <laughs> but they're like, damn, that's a nice ride. But she loves it. Is that okay to say? <laughs> no. Someone said you should, they said, please do hydro dipping with your amazing paint designs on top. That would be killer eye candy. Oh, with a, with a painted airbrush and then hydro dipped. 
hide your dipping with the yeah, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he's saying yeah i feel like if you're gonna dip it you might as well just print it somebody said any fine detail stencils in the near future for purchase uh i'm working on some I don't know if anybody has any suggestions i'd definitely be willing to listen uh, i was gonna do some skulls because i know people like skulls and sometimes customers like skulls it's not always what about what you want to paint you know so i was gonna do a skull pack haven't figured out how i was gonna do it yet but... i think that same person i skipped this up here question he said do you plan on coming out with a stencil line more towards like multi-layer stencils for high detail Oh yeah, probably not multi, probably not multi stencil. It's gonna be more like, just like this. You can put the detail in it. Just like I'm doing here is I'm just building it up, you know, a little bit at a time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, I know there is some, some out there where you can lay one stencil down, spray it, lay down another stencil, spray a different color, lay down another stencil, spray that color, and then you got something that looks pretty damn realistic. But you still got to get in there and do freehand to kind of like, you can see right here, I'm in my green. Like, see how sharp that is right there? I mean, it looks it looks good for what it is. I mean, but if you really want this to look more realistic, you're going to kind of come in there and like fudge that line up a little bit. You know, and put some marks and facial craters in there. Because that's really what we're doing now. You see, I'm getting closer. Still keeping the edges clean. Not really trying to do a whole lot of detail anywhere else. I kind of really want the detail to be right up in here. Like this can kind of fade out. I'm okay with that. That uh, I really just kind of want this all this the center area to look detailed. The rest of it can kind of fade off. I feel like that's that'll be a good look still, and not as much work. Task. Wait, I gotta find it. <laughs> uh, it said, do some Native American Im images as well as Japanese style. He said it would be a killer stencil pack. Hmm, that's interesting. I could definitely get into stuff like that. That sounds like fun. Okay, we're gonna move on to a darker color. So we got the dark green and I think we'll go ahead pour that back up in there. And we're gonna go straight blue. I will lay this back over the top. See, it's nice that we always have that reference and now it's, it's lining up. Now we got this blue down. We're definitely gonna start seeing some contrast here. Okay. Line that back up. And I don't. I don't really want to hit all of the stencil, like all of the openings. Definitely going to hit this right here at the bottom of that, and then around the eyes, kind of just blending in. gonna do the kind of the bottom of these where the shadows are not not getting it all it's 
See, I'm just going to kind of hit it this way. Like before I was hitting all of it. Now I'm being a little more careful. I'm just going to hit this top of the stencil, this lip, and let it fade down. And then just kind of just graze across some of this other. So that way it doesn't, it's not too sharp and too cut out. Definitely want to shadow really good up underneath the bolts and the ears right there. That way we have the nice um, secondary lighting that's kind of bouncing off the ear there. Somebody said, can you please do a Serape Mexican blanket live? That's an awesome video. Yeah, I can probably do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's looking better. All right. I do want to kind of come in here. Got a lot of texture over there where the eyes are. Kind of want to smooth that out a little bit. Three people said the Native American stuff stencil would be cool. Yeah. Like, uh, like what? The dream catcher or feathers? Anything like that? Somebody said, just a heads up, the little paint saver jars aren't on your Amazon. What the hell, man? Yeah, are they? They're not? Oh, yeah, I don't think they are. Yeah, I don't know why. Oh, we got some contrast there now. All right, so that once again, that's blue on top of green. It's going to make it look green still. Um, but you see we're getting the darker colors in there. Um, I'm going to kind of fade up in there. Not a whole lot more detail. I'm just going to kind of going to kind of bring everything together. Smooth it out a little bit because I have, I have plenty of texture there. And now I'm going to kind of pull back just a little bit. Still making sure I'm keeping, you know, I'm not spraying enough paint where I'm going to, you know, if I was to, to get into there, that would actually turn blue because there's not really much green in there. Then this up into here, nice and soft. Now we're just kind of softening things up a little bit. Man, he looks tired. Can you see how that blue is just getting in there and darkening that up? Kind of bring that up. He needs Botox. I don't think he cares. Bring some lines up in there. Turn my mic on. Someone said, how about a $10 Rothwell for something you do live? Uh, Yeah, that would be cool. A $10 raffle. That sounds like a great idea. coming like I said you can really uh, I mean you could stop at any time with this and it'd still be good I'm just kind of still just kind of working it in like I said, if you take anything away from this video remember to keep your edges clean meaning keep your edges bright 
Yeah, for those ideas for that Native American stencils that someone said a war bonnet with a skull feathers, dream catcher, etc. Oh yeah. Yeah, I love all those ideas for sure. Yeah, because they're looking so good hanging up on my wall over there. <laughs> so I give them away. Getting a little collection going here. I don't give in to peer pressure. Come on. Okay. Oh, yeah, right on, man. Yeah, looking forward to it. We'll be there on Friday. We're leaving Thursday, so it's just going to be Friday. So hopefully we can catch up somewhere. This Next week, will you? Yeah. Okay, that's looking good. I'm just going to kind of lightly just kind of miss this on once again, this is just blue. Okay. That's looking good. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make this thing really pop now. We're going to add some purple. So we have some green paint. We gotta be real careful with the purple though. Cause the purple has red in it. And you, you mix too many colors and y'all know what happens. It's gonna start turning brown. But we're gonna use that. Uh, in our favor because we do I, we really want to punch this in with a darker color and we don't want to use black you can use black you're just going to mud it all out it's better just to use purple well i don't know if it's better we're gonna do it we're gonna pour some of this purple into the green mixture green blue mixture bill p just gave you a 20 dollar super chat all oh, right on bill Appreciate that. The super chats. 100%. Okay, we're going to go darker on that. Oh, yeah. Look, that's getting... See, that's getting uh, pretty dark. Like, not a very... That's not a very good looking color anymore. So, we're going to be super careful. Like, we don't want to get this color all over we really just want to keep it limited but that's going to be our darkest yeah it looks like gray green gray, green, gray. <laughs> but it's better than black 100 percent better than black black would uh, unless you're really super careful black would just totally kill this thing black is too dark and it blending the black on that is just uh it's gonna dirty it up yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you go mixing certain colors they just don't work anymore all right that's that's reduced out pretty good All right, we're gonna definitely gonna use our stencil here. And we wanna sharpen up these, these edges really nice and sharp. Especially the bottom of this chin.
you can see like look how nice that that really dropped that chin down like that you can see now if you were to use black there it would just be so harsh it pretty much almost looks like black on here but what is it it's green gray see how that works it looks totally different when you spray it on there And I've just been using the stencil pretty much the whole time, like sharpening things up and then just, you know, just diddling around the whole thing with just keep my edges clean. That's all. This is not hard what I'm doing here. Like you don't even need to go through all the color steps. You can still make something that looks really good. See how that just, you know, I'm probably going to need to do this bottom half because it looks a little weird, but. Let's go ahead and do that. Make sure we have it lined up good. Whoa, crazy. There we go. He's puckering. I'm hitting the top of the stencil, kind of just letting it blend down. You see, I'm. I'm aiming for the nose right there, the paper. Looking good. Lightly hit those cheeks just a little bit, not too crazy. Definitely darken up around that eye. Someone said, oh, someone said you should give us a shot of them hanging on your wall at the end. Yeah, we can do that. If I remember. You help me remember? There's a lot of stuff hanging up in here. A whole ass half the car. No, we're not going to get people riled up over that thing. You know what happens. <laughs> I don't like it. People get pissed. But they don't understand. I was pissed when I saw you cutting and they uh -huh. thought... They We're not talking about that right now. Yeah, they thought I was cousin me, and I was mad you did it. I'm not talking about that right now. <laughs> hey, not for me. I love it. All right, so we're still going and darkening some of this up, especially the bottoms there. I'm going to hit this outer edge really sharp. Yeah, I just, uh, I'm not really into the whole raffle thing right now. We'll see, this thing might be trash when I'm done. Maybe hitting the garbage. Okay, we're getting close here. Mill some of these in right here. You can see I didn't cut out all of the hair. I just kind of went, took a few out here and there. You can, you can actually do more detail if you wanted to spend a little more time. But oh yeah, all right, that's looking better. Okay, I'm gonna come in here. And then we're just going to do some light shadowing to kind of blend all that through. 
so you gotta be super careful because you can mud this thing out you really want to stay on top of the darkest uh, colors you already have like if you were to hit this on the edge where you're trying to keep it clean it's gonna look different like different than what I'm doing when I'm spraying it right here so keep that in mind someone said hyped on your channel man any tips on trying to lay a pattern on a 240 SX valve cover I shaved the letters off down your channel and want to try some new stuff it's just a rectangle any tips uh, on what was the laying out lettering was that what it was Uh huh. Yeah, I would follow the edges with the first, you know, with like some tape to panel it out, and then uh, like run an eighth inch. It's like say like this is your valve cover. You run an eighth inch around the edge, and maybe curve the edge to bring it all the way around, or maybe go off the edge, and then maybe lay out a sixteenth inch next to that. That'll create the first panel. And then you can, uh, you know, cut it up certain ways, like run tape maybe across this way a couple of times to create three panels out of that one panel. Um, you know, just uh, tape it out, you know, see what looks good. If it looks good in tape, then, then what I would do at that point is uh, edge it out in a darker color, then lay down the lighter colors after that. All right, I'm gonna darken up a little bit of these edges right around here, cause we're just about done. Besides, we're gonna do some erasing, which will really, will really punch this thing out. I follow this edge right here and just give it a nice blend. They're hitting us up on Tinder. Oh. <laughs> like I said, if we wanted to keep going, we can add, like see right here what I'm doing, I'm just dropping this shadow underneath the chin even more. You know, right here, we can clean up the eyes, which we're gonna go in and do some erasing here in just a second. And then we're really going to make this thing pop. So, yeah, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Besides, a little more of a shadow right here. What? What was that? Overpaint? Overpaint. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to grab some erasing tools. Okay, I have a couple of different ones here. I have um, this fiberglass tool. I have a X-Acto blade. I have a couple others. I'm still looking for them.
All right, I can't find my other ones, but we're gonna go ahead and move forward with, um, you can use this X-Acto blade for a lot of different stuff, but uh, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, uh, I would use an electric eraser if I could find my erasers, but it seemed to be missing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scra scratch back some of this darker paint, this, this green blue paint to make um, just a little bit of a highlight in the eye. And you wouldn't be able to do this if you didn't have like a clear coat um, underneath it. You know, this has a clear coat that's protecting that, uh, protecting you from scratching away the base color. Which is, see what we're doing, we're just pulling it back to this color. It's okay. You see, I pulled back those little highlights in the eyes. Let's see what I can do with this thing. A lot of times it's just experimenting to see what works. You know, this the top of the ridge of this nose is gonna be bright. Yeah, that's starting to lighten it up. And this is just another way to create, you can just create texture just by moving some of those paints around. Basically, it's just scratching the surface just slightly with these little fiberglass hairs. It's probably really hard to see. Somebody says fiberglass tool, question mark, eraser, question mark. Yeah, this is a fiberglass tool that we're using to erase. But really, it's just creating a texture right now. I do have a finer tipped one that can get in there and get a little deeper, but uh, yeah. Someone said, I saw you went to the Tamco paint show. Are you based in Virginia? Uh, no, we're out of Utah. They just flew me in for that. And someone said, are you going to add white as final highlight? Uh, no. No. That's going to... Uh, if I was to add final highlights, I would probably hit it with the yellow. The original yellow to start. But I like what this is doing to the surface. And maybe you're having a hard time seeing it. But what this is doing is it's kind of like creating a skin texture. It's almost like kind of blending it out. Usually I'll do a technique like this and I'm not sure what it's gonna look like, you know, and uh, test it out and see if it's working and it's doing good, just keep doing it. I mean, you can, not, you can obviously not do it, do it and it still looks fine. <laughs> All right, I'll bring these highlights out just a little bit more. You make them look like a rectangle and it looks like they're looking into like a window or something. And then you could even go around like, you know, and create texture this way. We're not going to get all crazy because like really we could just say I'm not going to do it and I'm doing it. See, I just took that little edge right there and sharpened it up. Let me get that a little bit closer so you can see. And same thing with the, the eyes. See, by making it. Kind of making it a rectangle. It looks like it's uh, he's looking into like a window. It's the reflection.
Usually you do two of them. I don't know why. That's usually how it looks. And then, I mean, you could even take these and just put the little micro lines. Somebody says, might have missed the answer. Let me unmute it here. Uh, might have missed the answer, but is it easy to make those highlights because the clear wasn't sanded? Uh, the clear was sanded. No, it's the, the it's the base coat's clear coated, so that way I'm not scratching through the base coat. I'm scratching onto the clear coat surface. You can see how this is just adding just a little bit of a skin texture there. And you can even go this way on the chin. You know, remember that chin's going to be kind of this way rather than straight down, you know, so if you want to add just a little bit of like the dots and stuff right there, like the pores and the skin. Like if you're scratching away right here, like you're going to make less of a difference. Um, like you're going to make less of a, of a difference right here because it's not that dark of a paint right there. So that you scratch there, it's just really, you really can't even really see it that much. But if you come into here and you start scratching away the darker paints, obviously you're scratching it down to, uh, to the yellow, which is a lot brighter. Let's do a little bit over here and see, you know, not everywhere. We don't want it to look like that everywhere, just in a couple areas. Around the lip, we could even highlight, like, you know, because usually this lip would stick out. So you'd have, like, you know, like lip gloss, like gleaming off his lips right there a little bit. I mean, just the little tiny details. I mean, coming in here, and if, if I didn't keep that so clean, you could come in here and scratch that, you know. You can clean that up by you know, scratching that away. Like, watch that right there. It's someone's Just bringing that highlight back. So somebody asked you, when is it too humid to paint? Oh, uh, I don't, I don't know, know what too humid is. Um, I know that I have buddies that live in Florida and Texas that paint, so I don't think it's too humid really anywhere. If not, you just got to deal with it with the moisture traps. Someone said, do you think if Frankenstein was alive today, he'd be on Insta in a sexy nurse's costume for Halloween? <laughs> that painted a picture for me. Who knows what he'd be doing? Okay, let's go ahead and uncover this. We got the highlights. Uh, like I said, we could go in there. We could even clean up this line right here to create that highlight back. See that? Now you got some overlap there. Same thing here. Mm. Yeah, thanks. You know, and I'm going to stop here pretty soon. Okay. Yeah, that's looking really good. That's uh, that turned out pretty good. You know, we could even go darker because I did mix the that purple with the, the green. We could go back with the purple and hit the bottom of this and it would further punch this thing out really. Uh, but that's definitely good enough to where I'm happy with it and I feel like you guys a lot of you guys could do something really close to what is done here um, even if it was like you know not as detailed up in here and you didn't have as many of the marks and the lines I mean just go back and re-register it um, the biggest thing is is once you get so dark into the darker colors don't overdo it you, you see I was just really careful putting them on top of um, the purples on top of what was already kind of blue green rather than hitting those up in here where it was super bright um, Just 
you know, trying to, trying to manage those dark colors and not going too dark too fast. So let's go ahead and we'll pull this off. Somebody said, how many coats of clear do you usually use before you let it dry? I've heard you, I heard if you use too many in one go, it could crack. Uh, you know, it could, yeah, stuff could happen if you wait too long in between coats and it starts to harden up. Um, but really, I mean, after about four coats, possibly five, depending on how heavy you spray, um, you're not going to want to do any more than that. It's just not going to, it's just, it, once you get to a certain point, it just, uh, I don't know if it stops building. It really doesn't stop building. It just, you can just tell you have too much and it's better to let it dry. So I'd say five coats max in one session, uh, three to four coats is optimal and, uh, sand and, and do your next layers and, uh, re-clear again. Pull this tape off all right not bad that was easy i mean all the hard work really was uh making the stencil you know and that's not that hard you just get the exacto blade cut out kind of recap cut out the our image that we printed off of our printer print it out on paper to the size we needed cut out all the dark areas if there was any islands like in the eyes right here where it didn't connect we made little connection points right there and right there to hold the eyes together and then also the um, little piece of tape right here that held the nose together because once again the nose was kind of an island surrounded by the shadows yeah so that's what we did there you know easy pretty easy um we preserved our edges like i said we kept the edges clean kept them all clean right here didn't like you know spray too dark right there to lose the edge because you, you know you spray across all that you're gonna lose the whole nose right there all the detail in the nose which is fine when you're in the light colors but once you you're dark and you fill all that in then you're losing detail um but this you could definitely go more with this like somebody said hit it hitting it with white i wouldn't hit it with white now if i was to hit it with white i would have done it uh in the earlier stages i could have came up detailed this more but really i wanted that to be uh the money maker right there okay yeah and then the paints we'll just recap the paints here is the you can find these on Amazon now. Brand new. Brand new. Make your own base coats. Base coat pigment. Comes with a spoon. We got a spoon over here. here go. Sorry. I got one right here. Just to recap. Uh, this whole thing will make 12 ounces. So you can just dump this all into 12 ounces of clear base coat and you, you got it all mixed up. Or if you just want to mix up little bits at a time, like I'm doing here, you take the one scoop, mix it with one ounce of clear base coat, and you got your color. Just mix it up real good. And you're gonna to want to make sure you filter it. When you buy these, they do come, like I said, with the spoon, and it comes with three of the filters. So you can filter it through those, little mini filters and the the base coat and right now these colored ones are 16.99 free shipping so you, you buy these you can mix them together um if you want to see what these colors look solid so there's the purple that we used there's the blue we used you believe it or not there's blue in there there's the green we used And there is the yellow we used. Uh, so that's that. 
you see right here that's what that is mix it up in your airbrush you got airbrush paints um it, this is a solid pigmented color so really um you trying to airbrush with metallics and pearls you're going to have a hard time getting the detail um they're great for graphics and stuff like that but you, you really need something that's ground down finer like what we have here but you know that's uh i think that's the word, word that's going to be about it but that's one thing i didn't want to show you was that yeah so next week is going to be on wednesday and we'll be a sema on friday so if you're there we'll see you there and i'll post some stuff tomorrow on this thing they said last one so you lay graphics spray inner coat then two part clear sand and do more graphics yeah close um there's no real really any reason to spray the inner coat on top of the graphics if you're going to go with the clear coat um so Usually what I do is I would lay out the base coat, do the first layer of graphics, um, and then go straight to clear coat. Now, if you're worried about maybe running candies, like, cause what, what happens sometimes if you're going to spray down a candy and then you hit it with clear coat and you hit it too fast, it could run your candy cause it kind of would melt up into your clear coat, um, causing a problem could make it run. So that would be the case when maybe you would want to use inner coat clear on the top of your graphics, but that's not necessary. Um, I don't do it. I feel like that's just unnecessarily film build. You don't need just go straight to clear coat. Just, just, just hit a couple tack coats, light coats before you start to hit it heavy. Yeah, uh, maybe do something. Somebody asked about uh, corn farts, asked about crushed glass. That'd be awesome. Show my wall. Oh, I have the past ones. Okay. Well, here we go. There's a few we painted. I think I painted that one alive. There'll be another one. Got one up there. I got that helmet right there. But uh, anyways. We better look at this thing, huh? All right, right on, guys. Well, I appreciate you being here. And we will see you next Wednesday. We'll be doing something different. Thanks.